Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now in this video I want to look at how you extend your network by adding a new switch. Now I'm thinking that you've probably got some kind of router which maybe provides Wi-Fi, maybe has a few Ethernet ports from your internet service provider. And maybe you've used up those ports and you need some more. This video is about how you add another switch to your network so you can connect more things with a wire, wired connections to your network. Now this is really aimed at people who have little or no networking experience. If you've already done this kind of thing, if you know how to add more switches and things, then this video isn't for you. However, if all you know about your network is that you can plug in kind of a cable from your PC or laptop into that piece of equipment that came from your provider, your service provider, but you want to know more, that's the kind of level that I'm aiming about. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is a network switch. Now, probably you want to get yourself a gigabit switch. No point getting fast Ethernet or original Ethernet. Now you want a gigabit Ethernet switch, and they're not very expensive. You can get them between $20 and $40, depending on the number of ports they provide and the name of the company. You're looking at Netgear, TP-Link, uh, D-Link, Linksys, all those kind of ones. You can pick one up you know, from Amazon or whatever it is that you use uh, in your country. You're going to need a switch and you're going to need a cable. Now that cable has to have a certain length. Now the, to know what length you need, the first question is where are you going to put this new network switch? Now if it's, let's say you've got a home office uh, and you want to connect something more inside that home office, then you need to put the switch in the home office itself and maybe you'll put it right next to the existing router that you've got from your service provider so the length of the cable needs to be you know that long you know i'd probably recommend getting a meter length one or something like that and that's pretty simple but if you're trying to extend your wired network into other parts of the house for example maybe you've got other people in the house who need a wired connection maybe your router is in one place and you're setting up a home office and it's in a different room then you're going to need to, a length of ethernet cable that can go from your existing router to the new network switch and the thing you've got to remember is that needs to be put in nicely you're not going to be having cables you know cutting across your kind of hallway you're going to need to go up and round doors and um, maybe through a wall and along a skirting board so you need to think about how much cable you need and the good news ethernet cable can be up to 100 meters so unless you're living in a very very big huge mansion you really don't have a problem you can get whatever kind of length that you want and the other thing that often I overlook when I'm thinking about where to put a new switch is not only do I have to get that Ethernet cable to it, I also need a power supply, I need a mains plug. So sometimes I think, oh, that will be a great place to put that. I could just come across there and, and go across that door or whatever and it will plug. And they say, oh, there's no plug, I can't plug it in. So you actually be able to need power. So when you set up a new switch, it needs to be plugged into the mains and you have to have an Ethernet cable uh, that's connecting to your original uh, router from your service provider. Now once you've chosen where you're going to put it, it's near the mains and you've found a way that you can wire through your building to that particular point, you need to do the wiring and then one end of course needs to be connected into the new switch that you've bought. Now in the old days it was important first of all which port you plugged it into and also you had to have a special type of cable because actually technically when you're connecting uh, two pieces of network equipment together there needs to be kind of a crossover so the transmit and the receive are the transmit and receive on the other side so things have to get crossed but nowadays uh, that's basically basically always always uh, auto sensing so the switch goes oh I see what's going on here you've connected me up to another switch I'll switch internally the the right cables over and it does that so anything basically any kind of equipment you buy nowadays will know that and also it used to be that one port might be dedicated for you know uplinking or downlinking to other parts of a network so you have to be careful nowadays again you can put it in any port you like if you wanted to kind of be a bit OCD about it you could use kind of like the last port on your router that you've got from your service provider, port five, port eight, whatever it is. And then you could use port one on the other one. So you kind of got this daisy chaining idea, but in reality, it doesn't really matter. 
One thing to note though is that if you are using a not just a normal switch but maybe you're actually putting in another Wi-Fi router then sometimes it is important which port you plug it into because of two things. One is that only one of them is capable of connecting to another switch, got the auto sensing on it and sometimes this WAN port can look a lot like an Ethernet port so don't get those two confused. But if you're just using a simple uh, gigabit Ethernet switch then basically connect anything to anything and it should work. Now if you've got both ends connected, one to the router, one to your network switch, now you need to connect a PC or a laptop or whatever to the new network switch. You plug it into one of the other ports and then basically that's it. The rest should be auto configuration. When you power up your laptop, when you power up whatever it is you're connecting, it should request a network address. The original router from your service provider should issue that address and the cabling the physical part should all auto sense what's going on and basically that's it it should work so the ultimate test of course is to connect it all up plug in pc laptop whatever and then see whether it can connect to the internet now i've done this many many times during the various houses i've lived in a couple of gotchas just to make sure that they don't happen to you sometimes if you've actually added multiple switches so for example, you've done one and then from that one you've daisy chained even further. That's perfectly acceptable. Remember, if the one in the middle is not gigabit ethernet, so for example, it's just fast ethernet, that's 100 megabits a second, then what's gonna happen is that the whole network from that point onwards will be bottlenecked by that speed. I've actually had that, I kind of picked one up quickly, put it, connected it all up, and went great, now I've got these extra ports, I can do the other things, and then the, the, it wasn't as fast as I was thinking, and that's because it wasn't actually, it was a slow, it wasn't gigabit ethernet. So just be careful, the bottleneck is gonna be the slowest part of your network. And the other thing is, not all ethernet cards are gigabit. Now when I'm saying that, I'm probably talking about maybe if you've got you know older Raspberry Pis, or an older PC. Sometimes a smart television won't have gigabit ethernet, more likely to be fast uh, ethernet. So again, remember that it, unless everything is gigabit, then there are gonna be points where you aren't getting the same speed. You just need to think about that. Oh, actually that's why, because that's actually only uh, 100 megabits a second or, or whatever. So just think about that. And really that's about it. Now it sounds pretty simple because it is pretty simple. Extending your network uh, with a wired connection is not that hard at all. You might also wanna check out my videos about Wi-Fi extenders, about using a Wi-Fi extender with a cable, and also my videos on uh, mesh networking. Now in all of those videos, I give you more networking kind of uh, information that can help you decide how you want to expand the network in your house. Okay, that's about it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.